Welcome to Heart to Heart, our chat with the cast and crew of When Calls the Heart. I'm Kim and I'm admin from Ontario, Canada, and I'm joined today by... I'm Christy, I'm an admin from Michigan. And I'm Marg, and I'm an admin from California. And we're joined today by a member of the When Calls the Heart writing room, Allie Devereaux. Welcome to Heart to Heart, Allie. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm in Vancouver, so... Yay. Coming all the way from there. <laughs> we uh, hear that you contributed episode 10 to this season, which we can look forward to in a couple of weeks. Can you tell us a little bit more about what we can expect in the episode that you penned? I actually wrote episode nine. Oh, no. But... Oh, oh, goodness. Well, get it, get it straight. That's okay. Oops. But we, we block shoot. Um, I think mm. Neil, when he was on, was talking about how we block shoot. Um, so episode nine, and episode 10 were, were like kind of written together. Like Derek wrote 10, I wrote nine, but we were kind of working in tandem because they were shot together. So yeah, there's a lot of overlap that, with that. Um, but yeah, I wrote, I wrote episode nine. I don't really know what, like how much I can say about it, but I, I will say that it's pretty exciting. We get to answer like some questions I think that people have had mm -hmm. for a while, which was really fun for me. So when I got assigned the episode, I was like, really? This one? I can write it? Um, so that was really fun. Um, and, uh, we get to celebrate somebody's birthday. I'm not going to say who, but somebody's birthday. Um, so that's always Whoa. fun because I love when we can reveal mm. someone's birthday or any, anything like that. So. Hmm. Wow. It sounds significant. The whole season has been like every episode we, we get there. I'm like, this one's great. And then we get to the, I'm like, oh, this one's so fun. All the stuff that we get to do. So, uh, yeah, it's been a fun season. And Hardy's love getting answers to questions. <laughs> Which is, of course, you know, why we're here today. Of course, yes. yeah. <laughs> so your name has come up countless number of times in our interviews um, because you serve as a writer's assistant, which is, doesn't seem to capture really what you do um, for your role. Um, you take the notes from the writers and you serve as the reference for all the ideas that they throw out. Maybe you could tell us what that's like, um, hearing concepts being introduced and having the responsibility to record them. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. Um, I like I started as a writer's assistant in season eight on the show. Um, and it is like been so awesome, like being in the room, especially, you know, I'm a, I'm a newer writer. So getting to learn from all the amazing writers from One Cold Heart, like John and Beth and Derek and Peter this season has just been really awesome. And the amazing thing about being a writer's assistant is you literally get to be a fly on the wall. You're writing down everything. Um, so when I was first starting out, you know, you're just taking notes to everything. And then I was encouraged, of course, to um, contribute as well as we went along. But I just got to learn and absorb. Um, and so it's it's kind of really awesome, like getting to take the notes and keep track of stories. And I really, you write down everything that everyone says, because you never know when it's going to come back or be needed, even if we end up not putting it in the script or even the season, like there was stuff from last season that we just didn't have time to do that then we're like, when we started season nine, we're like, is there anything we can carry over that we really wanted to do last season? Um, and so then you go back through all the notes because again, when we're talking all day, every day, breaking a season, it's easy to forget something. So that's why the notes are really important to kind of keep it all together. Um, and I also got to research all this stuff. So if we had a meeting and they were like, oh, you know, we want to talk about this, this part in history, is there something you can reference I did speak a little bit about it with the bathroom thing before we got going but um yeah like I go and look it up and even if we can't be completely historically accurate on the show we try and kind of like lean into the history and sometimes it inspires really fun stories too so that's also another awesome thing I get to do as a writer's assistant yeah so you're referencing the bathroom uh, mention that my kick made in this or that was made about Mike Hickam, I guess, that he had trouble getting into the bathroom with all the M sisters. Sister. And Hardy's, of course, were like, was, is that you, <laughs> word used? Is that right? And so why don't you clear up the mystery? It was used. It's a, it's a more of like an American or North, North American term. So like British people wouldn't have used it. And actually, if you look up the history, British people at the time when they came to the Americas, like in the early um, uh, 1900s, late 1800s, they were sort of like, what? what <laughs> what are you saying bathroom but it was a term that was used so Hickam you know having grown up around the like kind of west he would have said it so it is historically accurate so cool so yeah. cool thanks for setting us straight no problem gotta gotta defend John let him know he was right <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Well, we have a lot more ground to cover in the writing process. Um, but before we get ahead of ourselves, Hardys have questions. Uh, Pamela Smith of North Carolina wonders who your favorite character is to write for. That's so tough because like it kind of depends like all the characters are so fun for like different things they get to do and, and say. Um, so it kind of depends on what I'm writing like. Um, I love when Rosemary goes like into the dramatics because you know I grew up as a theater kid so like the confidence she has to kind of just like speak the way she does with her big hand gestures and everything and that's a lot of that's Pascal but it's just so fun to kind of write because you just know when you're writing it then it's yeah. going to get to be performed in this awesome fun way um, but really there's like so many strong women on the show and like that obviously really resonate to that as like a young woman so like Elizabeth and Rosemary and Faith and um, Fiona this season kind of seeing her in like a really male dominated world has been really fun because I can relate to that Luckily on our show, we have a lot of awesome women behind the scenes, women bosses, which is great. Um, but I have definitely been on shows in the past where it's been, you know, a little bit more male dominated. And you know, I felt like I was the only woman around. So I can kind of relate to Fiona feeling that way too. Um, and then also this season, Little Jack too, because he's just growing and maturing and we have Pylon up. So we can kind of do a little bit more because he's just a little bit older. So there's just more we can do with him that we haven't been able to do in the past. So that's been really fun because it's just all these new opportunities to kind of see this little boy grow. Oh, I love it. <laughs> well, and should we get a season 10, seeing him develop is going to be so much fun. Oh my! I know. God. I feel like we're almost there. Like he's almost five because I would love to see him go to school. Right. You know, <gasps> can with you imagine? <laughs> Because we're almost, they're only like two years away. So Okay, you I just blew my mind. This. I wasn't I even thinking about that. That is so true. Wow. I just, I can't even, I talk about it all the time because I just get so excited about it, just thinking about it because, you know, it's my dad was a teacher. So oh you, know, my you can always relate to when your parent is a teacher and then you, they end up having to kind of teach you in a way. Um, so yeah, I just think it would be so fun to see. So we need season 11 announced soon too. So yeah, of course. Yeah. That. <laughs> 10 and 11. Let's, Let's do that. that. I'm scared. Let's do, that. Yeah. Let's do yeah. that. Well, Christy's a homeschool mom, so she could probably give you some background yeah. information on what it's like to oh my teach goodness. your own kids in your, Fun. In yeah. your schoolhouse. Yeah. The one room schoolhouse. I love it. Room bonus room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Shaven Van Vuren from Manchester, Michigan wants to know if Allie Grant was named for you. I wish. I wish she was. <laughs> but I know I, she, I, she w actually was on the show before I was. So I ah, came gotcha. on okay. afterwards. Um, and I was like, oh, there's an Allie on this show. That's awesome. Um, but a kind of funny little cosmic, I think it's like cosmically. Yeah, connected totally. Like, is that also her grandfather's name is Archie and that's my dog's name. <laughs> so I'm always like Allie and Archie. And then uh, John, when he came on, he was like, oh, we'll have to name somebody Archie. I was like, they already have an Archie and he's related to Allie. So it's like they already did it before we even came. <laughs> it's so beautiful. I yeah. love it. So Archie the, the dog. What kind of dog is Archie? He's a Pomeranian Chihuahua. Oh my gosh. He's very cute and tiny and kind of fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So should the writer's room, should there be a season 10 and should the writer's room return to being somewhat in person? Can you cart Archie along on your I have no idea. Mm. Actually, it's I've kind of had an interesting experience because I was only in the writer's room for two days. Oh wow! From Before when I came on the show, because we oh, wow. we kind of just came into the room and we were there such a short. It was two days. Like we were there Monday. Oh my goodness! Okay, Tuesday. Wow. We were. I was getting ready to and go. That Wednesday. was in I Canada because that's when Canada. the writer's room moved to Vancouver. Okay. Yeah, it was in Vancouver. So I, I was getting ready to go for the wow. day. I got the call saying, hey, you know what? I think we're just going to shut down for like two weeks or something. See what happens. <laughs> wow. Because it was before we really knew anything. Um, and then we've just been kind of in Zoom ever since. They were they were literally like, hey, can you set up, set up a Zoom room? And I was like, yeah. But I had never been on Zoom before. So I was like Googling <laughs> it really quick, trying to figure out how to do it. Yes. Two years later, here we are. Yeah, now we're, we're pros. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. So I'm sure that you've heard of the notorious black hole and Hardy's, you know, used to really, you know, be so sad when 
a character or storyline would kind a thread would kind of disappear and they like all their stitches to be to come right through and i gather that you have a very big role to play and we've noticed that in recent seasons you know there's uh, the mysterious black hole is gone i mean these characters get referenced even if they're not there and um you know i'm sure that that's in part because of this you know reference material that you maintain where you're able to pull these threads but after nine seasons that's that's something because there's a lot there's a lot and it's a big world like I think yes. you know, the Hope Valley world is a big world um and I you know I think it's important to all the writers like um Derek and and Peter have been on the show since like season two I think and mm -hmm. Beth has been on since season five so they're like really great with like the history and the integrity of the show just like great resources um but i know really early on when um i started on season eight with john um he kind of said you know i really i like easter eggs i like pulling things from the past i really think that that's important for the show and i was like i totally agree and um when i was interviewing for the show i started watching the show and i i wanted to watch it like the way a fan would watch it so i just devoured it like watched it all the way through and i really was like okay i feel like a hearty like i think i am a hearty i definitely best. am now um <laughs> Honorary but i watched hearty, of course. it and i uh so i watched it and then i um like i just wanted to put it all together so they have kind of referred to me sometimes as like the hope valley oracle or things like that because i just keep track of all this stuff but it's because i uh you know i made a huge big bible that is like this own kind of beast of the show because you know i was coming in new and john was coming in new and i was like the show's been on for a long time i think we kind of need a big reference point for this world so that's sort of that reference material they talk about is the bible Right. That's a common, Bible. that's an industry yeah. term is the Bible yeah. or TV writing or film writing. The show Bible. You that's create, right, yeah. when you're creating this world, the Bible um, that you're referencing is, is that. Yeah. Yeah. The show Bible. Okay. That's right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so get, maybe we can think of a couple examples, but I just, you know, and, and I know that it's true that you know, you can't always do that. You know, I, I have a little snippet that I put on the Facebook page sometimes of, I think it was Cynthia Cohen or one of the early writers talking about RIP and how they weren't able to kind of close that chapter in the way that they wanted to, though they wrote a scene. So it's, yeah. you know, it, it could, could be that writers all along had wanted to, but for whatever reason they can't, but it's really cool to hear that it's such a priority of John's. Yeah. And, and um, like, there, of course, there are always some things that like just have to kind of slip through. They don't go through, but it's really like the world is in my mind real. Like it's, it's a, a world that exists. Like when we see it, it, it exists outside the individual episodes as they air. They're just, they still exist. Everything's still there. So we have to think about, you know, all this stuff and the mm -hmm. Bible is full of that. Like it has um, every character and any time they list like their favorite food, their favorite flower, favorite book, anything they've listed. And it's all what's aired on the show. So all of the references come from anything that we've seen, but wow. it's still like 250 pages long now. And it's a huge reference point. It has photo wow. references. So we can just go through it's searchable. You can like quick reference it. Oh, so it no. exists. And, and I made it when I was starting. Cause I was like, I, this is what I would have wanted when I was starting on the show. Wow. So I developed it and it, it would be available to whoever else works on the show. So they can kind of look through and it has like quotes so that I, you know, or important things that the character said. If a character says, I will never do this again, we will quote it and put it in bold because of course we're going to reference that later. Yes. <laughs> and that's so fun. That's fascinating. The viewers that, that watch it, the Hardys, we love that stuff. We like if, yeah. as a viewer, I love seeing that on shows I watch as well. When that yeah. stuff comes up, if it's something from season one and we can reference it, you know, eight seasons later that's awesome because we've all yeah. been on this ride this whole time so um that yeah. is so cool that you see it that way because of course hardy's also see it that way as a real <laughs> world and to know that you're the keeper of those kinds of details is it's kind of mind-blowing i so. always joke with john and i say like hope valley lives in my head because he'll text me something and be like where's brookfield and i'll, I'll just tell him you know it's this it's up east and it's on this part of the map or or whatever it is that he's and it only took a half a day to get there and, stuff and like yeah that. or or they referenced it this way and and this they had this family these family members i last season florence and ned's wedding i was like florence has two children she says she has two children 
she has two children. We need, she, we can't have her wedding without referencing them, you know, yes. maybe because of COVID and there's some other situations, obviously we would have loved to have both her kids there, but you know, we had space restrictions, et cetera. But I was like, we need to find a way to reference it because it's really important that she does have two kids. Yeah. You know? And that she said it in episode two of season one. She said that she has two children. I have two children at home and you know, yes. that's just there. And I was like, of course we need to, we need to use this. So yeah. Yes, and Molly referencing her daughter this season. Yeah. Rosalie, yeah. Yeah. We love throwing it back to season one. That's so cool. And that's for sure. That's uh, kind of the role that I I fill in the group as well. I, you know, kind of do research or, uh, you know, putting things together, get both organize the files and the hashtags and the stuff like that. So <laughs> I, I That's definitely totally I you, Kim. It is. Like, yeah. I have the same thing going. <laughs> it's so fun. I feel like we're kind of kindred spirit. Kim like I feel like we are I think so yeah (laughs) Yeah. both of you from Nova Scotia yeah both of you with that encyclopedic knowledge just viewing out of your heads it's very beautiful love it and we got this Hope Valley knowledge to this Hope Valley in our hearts which I think is awesome there you go definitely (laughs) Christina Chen from Kansas City Missouri is one of many hearties who would love to read Elizabeth's book which we saw was uh, uh, printed at Ali Devereaux Press. So that's very cool. Um, <laughs> do you have any aspirations to write a novel? Because uh, that's a much desired read. Oh, that's so that's actually really fun. And the reason my name is on that is because um, for props and like for acting and stuff, they did need, obviously we didn't write the whole book, but they did need some of the book. I don't even know if any mm-hmm. of the pages were view, like viewable kind of but we did write them. Like I wrote three chapters um, that were the last chapters of the book and six chapters that were like the first chapters of the book and kind of planned out the arc of the book. So if you see those pages you see and it's things that, you know, she's referenced before. And so there is like part of it that exists and it's it's mapped out in a way so we could reference it because when you have a real book, Uh you kind of need that stuff. And I got to write it last season and it was really fun because um, it was actually one of the first times I got to write with Elizabeth's point of view because it was before I had written in the show so it was a great exercise for me to kind of get to get to know her and think about how she would think about the world um so that was so fun for me and to have that stuff and so um I think the last season you kind of saw the the, the end there was like three chapters because I you know we didn't know what we would need or on the day so we I wrote it out and so it, some of it exists I would obviously love um if we could read it even if somebody else wrote it I'd love to read it um but yeah I think it would be just fun for the same reason I had so much fun writing those parts Mm. I think it would be so fun to read it because I'd love to see the world with only Elizabeth's perspective and how she sees it right maybe we need a book excerpt yeah I'm I'm like Hallmark maybe we should make this book like I would read it (laughs) <laughs> totally bring it totally. on that's all awesome. i'm just curious what you learned about elizabeth writing those chapters well i was thinking you know about how like how like without using the word hope so much i know but how hopeful she is and how mm-hmm. she kind of sees this world even with adversity because obviously in a book you know you have characters that have to face hurdles and then i was like how would elizabeth view these hurdles and I was like she's someone who's grown from every hardship she's had and she's had like some serious hardships on the show so kind of seeing how she grew I was like that's the message I think she would want to send with her book and that's the message she would want to pass along to other people that are reading it so that was kind of you know a fun beautiful just mindset to get in for her I love that Well, is there a scene you could take us from inspiration through execution? You may not remember because you're younger than me. (laughs) There was a show called Schoolhouse Rock and they used these cartoons to kind of show how how a bill became a law. So maybe you could do that with the writing process for us. Carrie Bridges from Morganton, North Carolina is curious about the process. Okay, so it's so interesting because there's so many different um, kind of inspirations that happen in the the room and inspiration kind of comes from everywhere. So it's like, you know, sometimes it's real life. It's, you know, stories that we have um, that we're, you know, we share, like sometimes it, it can get really personal in the room where we share, you know, 
personal uh, stories about our lives, our families' lives. Um, and then it, it's not just us either, you know, then it goes to, you know, the production team and the directors and the cast. And um, with each little, um, I guess, like train stop, as I like to say, of the, the story process, it gains more to the story and builds. So, you know, it's just, everyone kind of comes to the story with their own life experience and that helps it grow. So even this, you know, this season, we'll see a little bit later, you know, as the, as the season's going on, some of this stuff, um, I got to go to set for the first time when they were filming um, episode nine, which was great. And even just seeing from, you know, those first ideas all the way to how they grew um, on set. And like then, you know, even there when um, Neil directs it, um, when, you know, Neil brought, you know, his perspective to it and then the cast brought their perspective to it and how it grew even there on the day as they were filming was just so awesome to see yeah. and that's what I really like about filmmaking is that yeah. it's so collaborative and it, it kind of never stops being a teamwork thing mm -hmm. um it's not just like if you're writing a book uh, then you're kind of just it's solitary in a way sometimes because you're just like there with the story mm -hmm. but in film the story is always changing and everybody's bringing something to it um so I think that's what makes it so fun yeah, it's a neat process. Um, Brian Shively of Lake Havasu City, Arizona, wonders how often it is the case that storylines pitched in the writer's room are substantially changed. That, it happens a lot. And there's like a whole lot of reasons kind of why it happens. Um, last season, we really saw it like a lot more, I think, than probably they had seen it mm. before just because of COVID. So we like I was saying, um, we didn't know um, right away, like how COVID was going to be. We kind of, you know, thought maybe it'll just be a short thing. Like no one knew how long it was going to take. So when we started thinking of story ideas, we started in March, 2020. So mm -hmm. the ideas that were coming up were stories we were hoping, you know, to do things. Um, I think um, actually like Florence and Ned's wedding was mm -hmm. originally supposed to be like quite a bit bigger um, because, you know, we were just going to have like the, big Hope Valley yeah. weddings that we're yeah. kind of used to. But um, because of COVID, we had like a lot of restrictions on how many um, extras we could have and, and the spacing of everyone. Um, and so then there was a talk, it was gonna be outside, but then it started raining, so it couldn't be outside. So Oops. then um, it had to go inside the church and then that had to be kind of, you know, another um, aspect. And then we were changing it kind of on the fly. And that John's great for that. John is so good. like he is kind of like cool as a cucumber in those situations. But again, the story has to change for just like things that we can't control or even predict. They just happen. Um, and then the story goes that way. So, you know, sometimes we have this idea when we're thinking of what the story is going to be, uh, like, you know, how it's going to go. And then we're just totally wrong because life comes and, and changes it. But sometimes I think then the story ends up being better because of it. And, you know, looking back, watching Ned and Florence's wedding, it's so beautiful and intimate yeah. and it's such a great yeah. um great little wedding that's really them so um yeah yeah that's something I was wondering about this season how much it, I mean it looks like the COVID protocol protocols lifted a little bit but like with some of the we're seeing still seeing the children outdoors a fair amount is that yeah. was that kind of how you steered it I think they still had the, the crew of the whole crew of the show has been incredible. Like I'm in awe, like I sat in on a lot of production meetings and stuff with John um, as the writer's assistant. I kind of just got to attend with him, which was great um, and take notes for him and all that stuff. But because of that, I really got to be privy to a lot of like the behind the scenes production side of it wow. and just seeing how great they all were. And, and, you know, we still had, um, you know, a few, like quite a few COVID protocols in place, mm -hmm. but they were almost more hidden because, you yeah. know, the crew really got their groove last season and, and knew how to keep everybody safe, um, but still make the awesome show that it is. And right. I'm just like in awe of that. So, um, yes, seriously, because yes. they were yeah. one of the first to go back. So it's really they must have it down to a science at this point. So, it's yeah, it, 
it's yeah, Vicky and, and uh, Michael Magnuson and the whole team in, in production, who I probably have talked to already. They're no, not so yet, great. but we're going to, and we can't, we can't wait for that. Uh, yeah. They were like our fearless leaders through this whole thing. And, and it, yeah, it, it almost seems seamless in this kind of crazy world that it was to keep everybody safe and safety really was like the top priority, but the story never suffered because of it. So I think that's really awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, in our conversations with a couple of the directors and with John, the word lexicon has come up a couple times that you're the keeper of the lexicon. What, what does that mean? I think it's because like I said, I am really, I am a hearty. Like I, I do care about like the show and the, the history of the show. And, and I'll always be, you know, the one to be like, Oh, Oh, Oh. And John always laughs. Cause he's like, I'll see you in the meetings. And I can see you going like, Oh, Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, but like in season three, they said this, but oh, 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 oh. And he's like, you're always the one that's just ready to like jump up with it. And it, it's like, it is because like I said, Hope Valley kind of lives in my head. So I, I, I think I've watched to keep the, to update the big giant Bible. I think I've watched the show probably all the way through 12 times, maybe in the last oh. like three wow. years. So you're definitely a hearty then. It's here, in my, it's here in my brain just so that I, I, it's it's fresh and I know it and I know their voices and I know their history and I think it it helps me even as a writer because I bring all that history with me when I'm thinking of the stories to come next and I I just think you know this is this is their past this is what they've been through so it would make sense for their um their life to go this way and you know I, that's because I haven't been on the show as long like Derek just has it because he's lived it with them the whole way right, through and right. yeah with Peter but for me, I just kind of had to um, make sure that I knew that history as well as the characters would so that I would be able to do them justice. Yeah. I just think the Hardys are going to go nuts because you're do you being the fly on the wall is exactly what, of course, all of them would like okay. to be. And, um, and bringing all of that detail and all of that hearty passion to the room is pretty darn cool, but it must be daunting that responsibility. No, you know, knowing you have this incredibly passionate and detail oriented audience, (laughs) Um, that, that must be kind of a daunting responsibility. I, well, I don't know if I'd say it's daunting. It's kind of, um, you know, I, I think I, you know, I consider myself a hearty and I think like the other writers do as well. And I feel like for us, it's more like, we get excited for you guys as well. Like it's mm. thinking it, it almost like propels the story because we're thinking how exciting it's going to be. There are a couple stories this season, um, especially in the later half that I can't talk about yet, but you'll see that we're thinking about them and we're like, this is going to be exciting. Like this is some things we've been waiting for. So and I'm sitting there thinking as a viewer, I'm excited to see this. So right. then I'm thinking, okay, and then the Hardys are going to get so excited and it just brings the excitement back. So that's why it's really fun. Even I'm not so Twitter great. I'm, I'm learning about it, but I'm not great at it. So I'm learning, but that's, what's been so fun watching every week. I'm always there liking the tweets and stuff because it's been really fun to see. It's like, it's like that same excitement we had when we were first breaking the story, we get to live it all over again as the yes. story is being enjoyed. Yeah. So it becomes just like a shared excitement. And it's like when you buy a gift for someone and you're so excited for them to open your gift and you're just like, oh, I can't wait for them to open it. It kind of feels like that. It's just a, a really warm excitement. I, I'd yeah. say. Well, it's hilarious that you use that metaphor because, of course, John's been saying all season with that we are the we are the gift <laughs> shakers. <laughs> so yes, you're buying. You've got a beautiful gift for us, but we are shaking that gift, you know, at every turn. Well, even before I came on, I was as much as we. Can. I was thinking. I was thinking before I came on. I was like, you know, I don't want to say too much because, you know, I get excited about the gifts coming too. So it's just going to be an exciting time, I think. Mm. Um, and I think it's sort of fun that we can still have exciting episodes, you know, nine yeah. seasons in. If, if there's still a way that the show is um, surprising people, but in a good way, I think that that's, um, that's really special. Yeah, it must be so gratifying to be on Twitter and to see the Hardys respond to what you're doing and particularly the detail oriented stuff. Um, I, I don't think they miss a trick. So 
I love yeah. that because I always say it. <laughs> I'm always the one saying, hey, they'll notice. <laughs> and so when, the, and I have been that one that screenshots it on Twitter when I, they noticed and I was like, I knew they noticed. I knew it. <laughs> I said it back in September. I knew it. Um, so thank you guys for, for proving me right. We are here for you, Allie. We're here to prove you right. We got your back. <laughs> we yeah, got and you totally back. got your back because you clearly have ours. So That's right. it's awesome. And I, yeah, it's just, it's been really fun. Like, obviously there'll be some things, you know, sometimes things have to, you know, go by the wayside, but we always try to keep them if we can. And then sometimes, you know, scenes get deleted or whatever. And then I'm like, oh, but that was such a good Easter egg scene. You, you know, there's some of that yeah. too. So yes, um, last season when all the deleted scenes got um, released, I was so excited because there were some, you know, oh. great scenes that we just sure. didn't have time to air. Um, right. We said, we said that to John last season when we were coming into this season, they're like, you wrote too much good things that had to be cut. So <laughs> John, pull it back a little bit. <laughs> yes, definitely. We don't like that. We like to see all those deleted scenes. So yeah. hopefully Elliot can bring those to us with Edify. That would be great. Yeah. So I feel like you've just pulled back the curtain on the wizards uh, that do this job. And we're just so grateful that you do this job and for your wizardry, because nine se seasons in, we're just, we're still surprised. We're still delighted. Yeah. So in thank you, Allie. Thank you, guys. And, I, and thank you guys for doing these videos, too, because uh, there's stuff I watch, because I told you I watch every heart to heart. There's stuff I learned that I didn't know. So I'm sitting here watching, and I'm like, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And that's awesome, because, you know, sometimes I think some of the other writers or John, they don't always share what they're thinking. So then when they share it after the fact, I'm like, that's so awesome. Like, that's so cool to learn. So thank you guys for doing this and putting these out here. Well, we've, you know, traditionally had the Hardy's family reunion, um, which we, of course, hope that we get another season and hope that there'll be an opportunity for that to happen again so that we could meet you in person. But I feel like this has given the whole Hardy's community um, even more of that kind of feeling because we typically have had a production panel and talked with, you know, the members of the crew and, um, I don't think there's any end to the desire to learn behind the scenes. And it, it's very fascinating. And I think the more conversations we have, the more we want to know. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, it's really fun. I mean, obviously I, I would love to do a heart, a hearty family reunion. If, if we can come back and do it safely again, that's always the hope, I of guess. Of course, of course. Well, that is the priority. So Hardys, you're the wizards too. You've made it happen week after week. And we're so grateful for the incredible ratings and showing up and on Sunday night at eight o'clock on the Hallmark channel. We can't wait to see you on Twitter. Please use the hashtag Hardys. And thank you. This has been Heart to Heart. <laughs>